What's up, guys? It's Chris back again here to talk about this coming up upcoming uh, HBO doubleheader on Saturday night. Um, also, I have a Strike Force video to do for the Saturday night as well, but I'm gonna do that on a separate vid. Not gonna do it here. Although, when I think about it, I probably could do them both on one because there's not a lot of fights to talk about. But too late now. Anyways, first up, we got IBF 168 super middleweight champion Lucian Boutte defending his title against Edison Miranda. Yeah. Forgive my lack of enthusiasm for this fight. Um, Boutte looked great in his last fight. Um, a rematch against Labrado Andrade stopped him with a body shot of all things in the fourth round. Excellent KO. I'm in a fight that I thought he would have a little bit more trouble in. Than he did, but I did think Butte would win. Miranda coming off a first round knockout over a no name, but uh, before that he had the loss by unanimous decision Andre Ward. Honestly, I envision this fight looking a lot like the Andre Ward um, Edison Miranda fight. Lucian Butte is a very crafty, slick boxer, good speed. And in the vein of Andre Ward, if not quite as fast or athletic. And Edison Miranda, um, I just don't see any threat he poses. I mean, he has the power, but I just don't think he's going to be able to really, I don't know, land enough big shots to really hurt Boutte and put him on his back. So, in all honesty, I see this fight as a pretty one-sided uh, decision for Boutte. I don't think he'll stop Miranda because I think, you know, I don't know, it just depends, but... Miranda showed a pretty solid chin for the most part. Granted, he did get starched by Abraham in the rematch and uh, by uh, Kelly Pavlik in their fight. But, um, you know, he's always a threat with his power. So I think Boutte will just pick him apart over 12 rounds for the most part. Fight's happening in uh, Canada, Montreal, I believe. Boutte's a strong draw there, so always a lively atmosphere. But uh, aside from the crowd and a uh, showcase for Boutte, I just don't see much of this fight to look forward to. You know, I don't understand anymore why Miranda's an opponent. Probably because HBO, you know, is in, uh, you know, just signed Boutte, I believe, is one of their fighters. So, giving them a somewhat easy matchup. Similar to when uh, Chad Dawson's first fight on HBO was against uh, Antonio Tarver, the rematch. So, Boutte by unanimous decision. Moving on to the main event of the night, the fight I am looking forward to. WBC, WBO middleweight champion. Kelly Pavlik defending his titles against Sergio Martinez. Hard to believe. I mean, it, I almost forgot that Kelly Pavlik owned two of the middleweight titles. Um, after the Jermaine Taylor wins, he was obviously recognized as the middleweight champion of the world. But his uh, since the Hopkins loss, his career has been so, um, I want to say, hectic, static, I don't know. Just crazy. That it's almost, you almost forget that Kelly Pavlik is still the man at middleweight. Um, he's coming off the win over Miguel Espino. TKO'd him in five in December. After numerous attempts to make a fight with Paul Williams were canceled due to Kelly Pavlik's recurring staff, of, um, staff injury to his hand. You know, I know a lot of people questioned why he kept pointing out the Williams fight. He was scared of Williams. I don't know. I actually believe that he had a staff injury. There was rumors that there was a lot of things going on outside the ring as well. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, we had this trainer, Jack Lowe, on our show a couple times, a radio show. You know, um, take it for what it's worth, but I believe what they were saying. Um, plus, you have the hospital photos. I don't know. As for Sergio Martinez, he's coming off the majority decision lost, Paul Williams, in December as well. Um, it was a late replacement in that fight, actually, I think for a... Uh, for Pavlik, and also maybe someone else was slotted in there too, I don't remember, but just a great fight. One of the better, if not the best fights of last year. Um, didn't expect Martinez to be as competitive. A lot of people actually thought he won the fight. Um, ultimately, I think I had it a draw. I'm not for sure what my um, exact scorecard was. I'd have to go back and look at it, but it was a great competitive close fight either way. Um, one that I really enjoyed. As for this fight, Pavlik, size advantage, natural middleweight, Martinez, a little bit smaller, although he didn't look, you know, it didn't seem to be much of a factor against Paul Williams, who's a guy who's fairly similar stature to Kelly Pavlik. Kelly Pavlik, power advantage, definitely, no doubt there. Um, Sergio Martinez, advantage with speed, slick boxer. Um, I'd say he's more well-rounded 
than Kelly Pavlik is. Definitely more fleet of foot than the Kelly Pavlik, who's pretty flat-footed at times, was definitely exploited in the Bernard Hopkins fight. Martinez obviously is not the same fighter as Bernard Hopkins, but I think he can look at some of the things that um, Bernard did that gave Kelly problems. Although Kelly has said um, numerous times that he just wasn't himself in that fight, whether it was the weight, he didn't feel well, um, you know, who knows? Only only Kelly Pavlik knows that for sure. But um, I'm curious to see how Kelly Pavlik looks. You know, he has a lot of inactivity. He looked okay in the Espino fight. He looked all right in the Rubio fight before that. Um, but he just hasn't really looked like himself since, I'd say, the Jermaine Taylor rematch. And he didn't even look all that great in that rematch. Granted, Jermaine looked better in that fight. Um, well, Kelly probably did look good against Gary Lockett, but take that for what it's worth, right? Not really much. Um, I don't know. We had Sergio Martinez on the radio show a couple, a few weeks back, maybe in February. Gotta say, man, that guy was a great interview. Um, we actually had to have Rob Riddler translate, but he stayed on for a long time. Um, he's about as smooth on the mic as he is in the ring, in all honesty. But, um, you might want to go back and check that out. I think we talked a lot about this upcoming fight with Kelly Pavlik, amongst other things, Paul Williams fight and stuff. Great interview, though. Um, for this fight, you know, there's a lot of questions about Kelly Pavlik. Not so much with Sergio. The only questions I have for Sergio is, is he a full-fledged middleweight? And can he handle the um, the power of Kelly Pavlik? You know, I think he would have won the Williams fight if he didn't get tired late. Or he might have had more advantage. You know, he did get fatigued at times. But that's because, as I stated earlier, he was a late replacement. So that's to be expected. And he did move around a lot in that fight. He did take some pretty solid punches from Paul Williams at times. But then again, Paul Williams, I don't believe, has the power, or the one-punch power, definitely, of uh, Kelly Pavlik. So... It'll be interesting to see how Kelly or Sergio handles a full-fledged middleweight's power if he gets hit on the chin cleanly. But for the fight, um, it is being held in Atlantic City Boardwalk, kind of a home way home for uh, Kelly Pavlik at this stage in his career. So I think the crowd will be in his favor, possibly the judges. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's neutral judges, but and referee, which you never know until the night of the fight. But I'm going to favor Sergio Martinez. I think that, um, as I stated earlier, I think you can look at things that gave Kelly that Bernard did that gave Kelly problems. I think he can use his speed to an advantage, obviously. I think he could fight a lot like he did with Paul Williams. Just maybe not trade as much on the inside, you know, um, or for as sustained as, as peers as he did with Paul Williams at times. But um, I think he can just use his movement, move around the ring. I think he could really outbox him in the center of the ring. I mean, it sounds like a lot of the fights I break down are the same. And it, but in all honesty, they are. Um, the matchups. Kelly Pavek needs to cut off the ring, try to trap Sergio Martinez in the corners or against the ropes, and unload. You know, Kelly Pavlik has good combinations when he really lets his hands go. He has that big right hand. He has a pretty good jab, you know. Use that jab to measure Martinez and try to keep the speed, you know. The best way to neutralize speed, they always say, is a jab. And Kelly Pavlik does have a pretty good jab. And a, and a very solid one, too, when he puts combinations together, as I stated. So, um, Kelly Pavlik can definitely win this fight. Um, especially if he's able to hurt Sergio. He's a good finisher, Kelly Pavlik is. But with the questions surrounding, you know, the layoffs, the hand, the staff, you know, um, and just the way Sergio Martinez has looked at lately, unless he's just really undersized in this fight, I just see Sergio Martinez being able to outbox Kelly Pavlik over 12 rounds. I don't think it's going to be one-sided. I think it'll be a pretty competitive bout. Um, I hope it's not, you know, uh, a decision that is questionable. Hopefully it's a legitimate decision regardless of who wins the fight. You know, I really don't have an interest in who wins the fight. But um, I see Sergio Martinez pulling this out over 12 rounds. Once again, I will in no way be surprised if um, Kelly Pavlik wins this fight, especially if it's by KO or TKO. But I'm going to go with Sergio Martinez to win by unanimous decision. So what do you guys think about these fights? Do you guys have any interest in the Boutte or Miranda fight? Do you even think Miranda has a chance? And who do you guys got in Pavlik Martinez? That's it for now. Be sure to check out the website. There will be bloodfightshow.com, leaveitinthering.com, my Twitter if you're interested. Links in the information bar as always. Radio shows back this Thursday. Um, check that out as well. Until then, or I'll probably be back on Sunday to give my thoughts afterwards, but until then, guys, I'm out of here.